All right, my friends, today we're checking out an amp that many, many people have asked me about. It is the JBL DSP 4086. It's a 40 by 8 DSP amp. So the name says it all. DSP, 40 watts by 8, 6 channels of input. Let's check it out. I always like to look around the box before I actually open it to see what kind of information they hold. Right here, we just got some advertisements. A little bit of information right here. This kind of tell us about the uh, power ratings, the RMS, the max power, stuff like that. And on the back, they give you a little preview of what the DSP software looks like. And we will be diving into the software to check it out in just a minute. But the other information that we have here is the actual size of the amp. And it's a very small amp, five and a half inches across, nine and three eighths inches long, and about two inches deep. So uh, let's open it up and see what it looks like on the inside. Always nice to start with the manual. Got a few stickers as well. We'll check out this accessory pack first and see what all it comes with. In the big package, we have our speaker, power leads, and the USB cable. That's about a 10 gauge power and ground, a remote turn on, and a remote out. So the remote out is a nice feature when you're running other amps, especially if you're using line level, that helps you out a lot. Then you have your speaker connections here. And then of course you need a USB cable to hook up to it. It comes with some speaker connections to RCA in case you're going line level. It comes with an extra fuse, some mounting hardware, and then the cord for the base knob, which is included right here. And this is just kind of a cheap plastic base knob, but I do like that it's kind of compact. You also get a little USB with JBL label on it. And this includes the DSP software. Of course, you can download the software online and get the most updated version. But this also includes the driver so that your amp will be recognized when you hook it up to your laptop. All right, now for the main attraction, let's check out this little amp. Here it is, not very big at all, just about the size of my hand. As you can see, a very compact little amp. You have your six channels of input in here. This can be high or low level. The remote turn on plug here. Your input level is here, low, high, and high too. Turn on mode, you can do remote, DC offset, or audio sense. You have your plug for your speaker outputs and your power input a power and protect light pretty simple so now that we have this amp unboxed let's go ahead and do a dyno run on the dyno run i'm going to do it a little bit different for the sake of simplicity we're just going to load down two channels test those at four and two ohms because that's all it's rated once we know how much power this actually puts out i'll hook it up to some speakers we'll listen to a few tracks and then we will jump into the dsp software so with that being said let's see what kind of power this amp makes all right, here is the 4 ohm stereo test. This can't be bridged, so we're gonna do a 4 ohm. I'm having a bit of issues with this conductor, so I'm just gonna monitor the amperage with a regular clamp. Fifty-three watts, pulling seven point seven amps. Now we're going to test it at 2 ohms. We are rated 60 watts per channel. Let's see what it does. Eighty-eight watts, 14.3 volts, and we pulled 11 amps. All right, we're going to jump in the software here and see what it's all about. I've got it pulled up on my laptop, so let's get to it. The setup here is actually pretty simple you have a master volume here you can also see that volume here it's simple enough to change you can just drag it where you need it to be and obviously it will be displayed another thing that you can see right here is the amps input voltage so depending on whatever your voltage is if it's 14 15 volts you can see it right here as well as the amp temperature i've noticed that this amp depending on where you place it does get a little bit warm so it's kind of nice to monitor it with the usb as you're kind of testing and seeing what's going on. This one does read in Celsius, not Fahrenheit. I'm sure there's some way you could change that. 
but I haven't yet. Outside of that, you have all your channels over here on the left. You can mute an individual channel if you'd like to. So we'll just kind of quickly set up here. So we'll go front left tweeter on this one, front right tweeter on channel two, then we'll go front left mid range channel three, front right mid range on channel four. Then let's just pretend we're using a three way setup. So we'll go front left woofer on channel five, front right woofer on channel six, and then we'll do rear full range on the back, left and right. That'll give us a three-way plus rear fill. Let's turn these up a little bit. Now that we've got the channels turned up, you can see right here, you can link these in pairs. So do just click the link and now the two are linked and it also matched up the volume. The delay you can set up in milliseconds, centimeters or inches, whatever you wanna do. In this particular case, I think inches would be pretty easy because you can just measure. So 67 inches to the tweeter, 48, you know, these are just random numbers. What well, looks like the farthest you can go is 163 inches. Now we jump into the crossover. You can come over here and choose whatever slope you like. You can choose your frequencies here. Say we want to change this from 5,000 to 15,000. And you can see it changes the slope right here. Next, you kind of have the speaker's locations. It's showing you which ones you have chosen right here. If you click two, you will see two. Obviously, they're not linked, so it did not change the crossover slope here. But if I were to link them, it would change the crossover slope to match for both of them. So on the input mixer, you can turn on and off depending on how much input you have. My buddy Dean has a very good video on how to set up this input mixer and he goes through this software as well. So I'm going to link that in the description below in case you want a more in-depth tour of this software. All right, that being said, if you want to go into the EQ mode, you can just click right over here and you can start to EQ anything that you need to EQ. Let's turn all these off except for channel seven and eight. Okay, we have both these. You have two different types of EQs. You can go parametric, you can go graphic. If you go graphic over here, you can just simply move it up. And this is gonna give you 31 bands. If you like graphic EQ, it's there for you. I prefer a parametric EQ. A parametric EQ to me is a little bit easier to tune you know, depending on your preferences. So you can select your cue here, you can go narrow or wide, and you're seeing this number change right down there at the frequency of 407. So let's reset the EQ on everything. Go back to channel one, go into the parametric EQ. Now let's mess with the cue a little bit. So we can go super narrow if we want and making it almost like a graphic, or you can go super wide and have more effect on the curve overall. Of course, this is not all the software, but it's a basic overview, so you get an idea of what you're working with. Again, I will link Dean's video in the description below if you want a more in-depth walk on this software. All right, we're back with my final thoughts on the JBL DSP 4086. I think the amp is great. It exceeded all its ratings, although we were not fully driving the power supply, so that's known. You may get closer to ratings if you're doing that. 
the DSP software is fairly straightforward, simple to use, powerful in that you get not only a graphic, but a parametric EQ, you get the input mixer, you can link channels, you can mute channels. Um, you have three different ways that you can do your time alignment. So I think overall for a DSP amplifier under $400, or I think MSRP is somewhere around 400, 450. Um, you can often pick them up for $350. I think it's a fantastic value. And if you're not looking for a ton of power, but mostly you want good sound, you want to be able to use, you know, all eight channels and maybe have a three-way with rear fill, maybe have a two-way active up front, run rear fill, and then use the other two channels for the subwoofer control for cheaper, then you can buy a full DSP at 350, which I think it's currently on sale for right now. I think if you were looking at this amp and you were on the fence because of the power, then maybe you have something to think about. Although in my test at four ohms on my, you know, cobbled together bookshelves that I just made, I think it drove them pretty well. It got the mid bass moving well. And of course the tweeters were there. With all that being said, I do appreciate each and every one of you who takes the time to watch the videos. And I hope to catch you on the very next one. I'd like to thank all my Patreon supporters, but the six star or more members get a special shout out. And that is 2001 Monolithic, Gene Nava, Joaquin Juarez, El Fuego Audio, Travis McClendon, Brandon Hanna, William Berg, Fox Boy Audio Sound Solutions, Jesus Tires, Dennis Cromwell Jr., Scott Dilbeck, D. Stewart, David Koslick, Scott McCord, Matthew Tolberg, Cornut, Trucker 9000, Bobby Burkett, Kevin Lautner, James Childers, Baba, Thomas Marshall, Living Loud with Andy, Neil Nato, Chris Cogburn, Lars Madsen, and Old School Stereo. For as little as $2 a month, you can join the Patreon team and get exclusive Patreon-only content, including a monthly Patreon-only hangout stream. It's a really good time. You guys are missing out. And if you want to join, check me out at patreon.com slash high 5 Vega. Oh, oh. Fade away.